How can we stay, Dad? Son, lion don't leave the Serengeti. It's Ricky! He won! Welcome to another edition of Extra Butter! This week it's the story of a boy. A boy who's named Rick. A boy who's named Rick. A boy who's white. Now if we could only find a title for it. Anyway, the stars of the relentlessly inspirational post-World War II follow-up to Unbroken, also called Unbroken. And their freaky aliens who can go invisible, the quite visible Olivia Munn gives us deets and details about the Predator. And she beatboxes. That and more coming up today on this edition of Extra Butter. It's just me and my friends hanging out with you, talking about movies kind of like this. Hi. Hey. 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 Brother and sisterhood of the traveling popcorn. Oh. All right, you guys, welcome to the show. You are our friend. I want you to meet my friends now, the world famous Mikey Winfield. Oh. I'm here. I'm here. You're not here. You're, here. Uh, You're here. You're not know, traveling. Yeah, You're not making a movie. Sure. Yeah, right. I'm just here. Right. You know? I'm loving it. Up. Every minute of it. When you're on the road and we find of your tales, where are you laying that down? Where do we find you on social? You know what? They should do MikeWinfield.com to see all the upcoming dates and the new specials being released internationally. There you go. Like Surprise you two haven't crossed path. <laughs> Travel blogger Kelly Savannah Deaton, where do we find you? Kelly Savannah Deaton. I keep it pretty easy. All right. YouTuber at large, Maria Gloria, where hey. do we find you? Hey, Maria Gloria. Pretty simple, too. And complain about me like you always do at TV, Marques Allen. All right, you guys, the nun came, it saw, it conquered. I knew this was coming. I didn't realize it was going to be one of the biggest movies in the Conjuring universe ever. Really? Because you, it's an origin story, right? You so, didn't see that coming, Mark? I know it was going to be The trailer didn't freak you out. The, fr the trailer didn't make it to being a trailer. Well, didn't like, freak you out? Like you, I thought the entire Catholic population of North America was not going to go see it a because little. it hits a little too close to no, home. No, we still go watch it because it prepares us for more. <laughs> Okay. I think because our culture, man, likes to be afraid when we can call it. Yes. Right. So yeah, when we can true. say, okay, I get to go be scared versus it just happening. Yeah, that's true. Let's talk about the casting of this. Yes. You've got Conjuring royalty because Vera Farmiga is yes. the big sister, the little sister Taisa in this movie. Taisa Farmiga. Taisa yes. is amazing. And then you've got Demian who plays a Catholic priest. Now, let yeah. me just tell you a little something about this type of movie. If you're the guy that's playing the Catholic priest, they're going to be hitting you hard in oh, this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, very hard. I know. Didn't we learn anything from The Exorcist? It will not bode well. No. 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 People never yeah. learn. No. But it's good because they keep making these amazing horror movies that I just love horror movies. That's my favorite genre. So I'm glad this stuff doesn't keep working. I'm yeah. glad. I, mean, yeah, I can tell you this. I don't want to plot spoil, but there will be a sequel. You know what I'm talking about when it happens. In the meantime, oh. I talked to your cast members about it and their scariest moments. Take a look. Talk about the hardest day's work on the set. Uh, I, I think for me at least was uh, being, you know, in this coffin for so many hours and um, I'm not claustrophobic, so... Uh, I am, so I'll just tell you right now, it works. I was okay, <laughs> but friends that are, that are uh, claustrophobic, they have told me, how could you do that? Just to watch it, that, you know, really, really creeped me out. And, uh, and it, was, it was difficult even for me, you know, that I'm okay with, you know, small spaces and stuff and all that, but that you can avoid thinking what would be like to be buried alive. Oh my gosh, I mean, I think that's, I think that's everyone's greatest fear. I wouldn't want to be buried alive. Oh, that's great. Is there another scene that steps on your uh, wildest fears? Uh, my wildest fears? Um, I mean, one of the most, one of the more difficult uh, scenes we shot was in this water tank and I was working with Bonnie Aarons, who plays a demon nun character. And, you know, I guess I didn't realize this was a, a fear of mine, but having a demon <laughs> fly at you, screeching in your face and trying to, like, rip your soul from your body, that's now one of my greatest fears. Okay, how perfect was she for this role? And you know what? She almost wasn't even considered. The director, Corin Hardy, was right. like, nope, your sister's in the other ones, Vera yes. Farmiga. Yeah. Can't have you in this. It's too close to home. But she went out and auditioned anyway and guess what ended Nailed up being it. the best actress for the job I really can't see anybody else no. doing I mean the thing she did in the water though, that water oh. scene are you kidding me when we just showed the water scene while she was talking oh, about it just seeing even the production of that like you see you see a boom mic in the shot and you see the camera in the shot but still it's, it's creepy terrifying. to see that nun terrifying. in the water yep. terrifying something about nuns and demons and I'm all that I'm telling you that's like makes for a good time right yep yeah I'm not a fan of this sound when they go Oh, no. yeah. Which is around every How's corner. Yeah. 
<laughs> Which is the entire movie, basically. Yeah, I don't like that in movies. One more time, how's it going? See right there. You see, it makes the hair on the back of my neck yep. stand on end. Yep. All right, there's a reason this movie is crushing it at the box office. I highly recommend you yes. round up people you like and people you don't like so much to go see it. Yes. Yeah, nothing brings you closer than a good horror movie. Right. All right, segueing on to another type of movie. If you want to go see something based on a true story, yes. this movie is so good because you're watching it going, this cannot be happening, and yet it really did. did it White Boy Rick. Yeah, 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 they're talking to a 14 year old, and he's an FBI that is, informant. Right? That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. And why does that happen? Can you imagine? And I'm always up for a drug related movie, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. They just have like but, such a. <laughs> hold on, last week, quote of the week last week, I'm always up for a good hurricane movie. <laughs> yeah. This week, I'm always up for a good drug movie. Oh, so a good drug related drugs movie. And hurricanes. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, you, know, you should more, write that one. You know what's right. even more amazing, though, is that kid who plays the son, who plays White Boy Rick. This yeah. is his first ever role. This. You kick my ass. First ever role, and he's going against Matthew McConaughey. That's royalty. I mean, right. Oscar winner shit. Matthew McConaughey from Dallas. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And then you have this kid who's never acted before in his life. That's huge. You're going against some major heavyweight people in this movie. Heavy hitters. We uh, we might be flipping about it being a drug movie, but if you think about it, some of the more award-leaning movies are drug movies. Yes. You blow is one of your favorite movies all the time. one of my absolute favorite movies. I traffic. Yes. All right, kids, <laughs> just say no to drugs, say but just yes say yes. Say yes to the movie. Yeah, say yes to yes. the movie in my interview with the cast right now. Matt, what <laughs> made you decide, I know this guy, I got this, I got Rick Sr. Uh, I knew, I know some fathers that like him. I know some fathers that want to be best friends with the kids. No, 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 commit to him, shoot him. Never, Fine. I've never, I've not seen that turn out to be a good shoot recipe for parents. Um, then you got, I, then I became interested in single parent homes, which I think is an epidemic. And, and, uh, and uh, then you got a family living in this poverty, doing what they can in a family, a father that has all the heart in the world. Sure. Wants it, want, all he wants is to have his family together. All he wants is to have it be like maybe it used to be, which is not anymore. And he's just living off these hopes and dreams of the future, but he can't toe the line. He can't get it done. And you can say he, he, he was born into it without the capacity, he's ill-educated, doesn't have the ability, but it, he, he's, he, his heart's in the right place, but he just doesn't have the can-do to get it done. And I was kind of heartbroken by the guy. Like I said, this, is my, this role for me is my first sad country song, you know, as far as our roles go. I've never had a sad country song. This is, this is the old Merle Haggard lyrics, you know. Mom, I got hit by a train the day I went to jail. Yeah. <laughs> you know? A lot of pressure being that guy right there man. <laughs> right yeah, there yeah it is a lot of pressure but you know um a lot of thought goes into mind you know a lot of creativity and just when i think about white boy rick i just think you know based on true story and we just blew that blew it out of proportion right. we had fun doing it yeah it was really had fun. fun every day every step of the day it was always fun always something new it was amazing a huge hit at the Toronto International Film Festival, and I think it's going to keep rolling through the Academy Awards season yeah. as well. White Boy Rick, go see it. Uh, Want to keep this rolling to talk about more reality-based movies? Absolutely. Yes. All right, coming up next, Unbroken, its sequel called Also Unbroken. Unbroken. We'll talk about this post-World War II drama next. Bless you, Lewis. Welcome home. All of Torrance was praying for your safe return. Miracles didn't save me, Padre. A couple of atomic bombs did that. <laughs> well, welcome back. We're talking about the other movies headed to the box office you might want to check out. Right. Sticking on the Keep It Real tip, we're talking about Unbroken, oh. the sequel Unbroken. to the other movie called Unbroken. Yeah. M Mike, I know you're a big fan of war movies. I know oh, you love yeah, a good yeah, war yeah. movie. I'm always up for a good war movie. You know? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Just a few minutes ago, you were always up for a good drug movie. Yeah, but you know, it depends on the day of the week. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. and, uh, it yeah. doesn't matter what it is. Mikey right. Winfield next week. You know, I'm really up. I'm always a sucker for a good movie involving a house with clock yes. and its walls. Oh, I just love a good men movie. Harry Potter. I always love a good tortured wizard movie. <laughs> oh, oh, I love Harry Potter, though. So, Mike, is this really a movie you think you'd go check out? You know, um, actually not first. Okay. I think it was a movie, you know, if someone tells me it's good, then I'll go watch it. Yeah. So, I All don't right. know. 
This movie doesn't have a lot of the same action. The first movie in 2014 had a lot of action. It was based on the actual war experience. Right. And this is the second chapter, right. so it's more PTSD-based, more faith-based. He finds faith, he finds religion. Yes. So it's kind of a slower chapter. And how do you have a different director? Angelina Jolie is not involved with this one, number one. Number two, the lead actor is different. Right? I think it's a different kind of feel. That one, like you said, it was an inspirational action movie. If you're not familiar with yeah. the story, it's based on the best-selling book from Louis Zamperini yes. about his life and his true, absolutely remarkable story. Yeah, well, the story that happened when he came back is a little less remarkable, but all that important. It's all, like you said, it's about PTSD yes. and some issues that came home with perhaps alcoholism, yes. and they're very open and honest about it. I sat down with the aforementioned cast. I thought they did a lovely job and had some good husband and wife chemistry. Take a look. And you know, the movie also shows the good times and the bad. So yeah. in terms of celebration, just in terms of making this movie, when you look back, what's your favorite day on the set? There were a lot. Oh. I, I really enjoyed the days where it was so full of people because we had so many laughs. Yeah. Um, so whether that was with the family or with um, the friends, yeah, it, was really yeah. it was just it was so much fun. Right. Yeah, I feel like I have to say the day where I ran all day. Really? I think hey, I wait, that was your right. favorite. Huh? Sorry, that was, this might be a first. that was really bad sarcasm. It was the worst. <laughs> I hate it. No. Um, I actually, I love the day we were actually on the beach and then we yes. shot the sequence and we were literally getting the last shot of the day yes. as the sun was going right. down. Yes, it was so cool and epic to just be like, we're going to get it. Oh my God, we got it. Oh my God, it's amazing. Hey. Yeah, oh, one take as the sun was actually setting. Yeah. That was amazing. That, yeah, scene. that was really cool. So I hope the two of them together sold that to you. I yeah. love them together. Yeah. I think if Great chemistry. You know, if you are of faith and you're looking to up your faith a little bit, this would be a movie to help you out with that. Unbroken, A Path to Redemption, the sequel to the other movie called Unbroken. I think you summed it up. Less action, but a lot of heart, this yeah, movie. this has a lot exactly. of heart. Yeah, increasing faith. That's great. Mike, yeah. how are you for Invisible Alien movies? Oh, man, I love, I cannot get enough about Invisible Alien movies. <laughs> I knew yeah. you were going to say that. Yeah. Coming up next, it's Predator. The stars of Predator join us. Olivia Munn brings it. It does some good beatbox. You'll see. Hey, welcome back. It is Extra Butter. If you're looking for something awesome to see this weekend, another new movie on the way that I think you'll highly like, especially if you like science fiction. As Mikey Winfield said, you're always down for it. Oh, up. man, a movie with a predator involved. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wow. You mean like Predator, like Chris Hansen Predator? Oh, no, 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 no. no. This is a totally like, different a kind of Predator. Show. That's a good show. Not one when you trick guys with cookies. No, I'm not into <laughs> a, a totally film different like that. Movie. And what's Stick great a about this movie, to me, I love the cast. Man, the cast yeah. is yes. built. Sterling K. Sterling Brown. K. Olivia Michael, Mine. Olivia, Olivia Munn. You got Trevante, this is the guy from Moonlight, and I'll uh, show it loving you if you ever seen it. Right, right. And Keegan-Michael Keys. Keegan-Michael Keys. I can't believe they got so many, no offense to all the Predator fans, I've never been a huge fan, and I know this fan base is huge, because the first huge. one came out in the 80s, yeah, and they're and still coming out with Arnold. Yeah, came out when it was yeah. like one line, silly dialogue, and action yeah, movies. And still going. Arnold, t testosterone yeah, strong yeah. in this movie. And it's still going. It's still going. It it's, called I, it's kind of crazy to me how they got such a strong cast to be in this. Like, yeah. it's a, it's crazy. Good for them, though, because I yeah. think that's what's going to bring a lot of people that aren't usual fans of this franchise to the theater because the cast is stacked. It has a really good cult following, but I really do love like the you cast. Do? I love the Olivia. Cast, yeah. I love Olivia Munn. I watched an interview with her where she's talking about her biggest fears, and they're like, what's your biggest fear? Like, getting drowned or setting on fire? And? Getting sent on fire or aliens. And she goes, no, brain-eating amoebas in water. Like, she's just such a funny, down-to-earth oh, girl. I didn't even know that was a thing. Now I'm afraid of that now. Oh, no, it is a thing, and it's terrifying. Oh, I looked it up after she talked about it, and it really is I'd scary. rather watch that video than Predator, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm going to Google that while we take a look at this interview from the set with Olivia. Take a look. You know, you think that you, you know an opponent. Um, you go up against another human, you know what their capabilities are. And you look at this predator, and it's got arms and legs and the head, and it, it, it seems like it would be human-like, but of course it's not, and its strengths and abilities are so uh, far beyond anything that we could even think about. And I think that's what makes it so terrifying, is that um, it's, it's so familiar, yet um, you, we have no idea 
how to deal with it and how, how to survive it. Like you, I love me some Olivia Munn. I love yeah. her. Did you know she won Sexiest Hair? Victoria's Secret gave her the award what? for Sexiest Hair and it. well deserved. Well, yeah. I, Honestly, she could be sexiest well, anything and just take it. Yeah, she's pretty amazing. I, I love her too. I sat down with her and guess what I was paying attention to during the entire her interview? Hair. No, her beatbox skills. Oh, Take a look. Okay. You had a real world skill that you would roll into your ninja personality. What skill? What do you do exceptionally well that would become part of your ninja you? Oh my god. Olivia. Hold on. You're both making prayer hands. Mm. I beatbox. Oh boy. Oh, you, you can't just bust that out it. without me breaking up. You know you're going to have to beatbox right now. Have you heard me beatbox before? No. I'm waiting for the box to open. Oh, here. Hit it, Justin! Break it down! You just got the score to your next know. movie. That's yeah. phenomenal. Thanks, Nice guys. work. <laughs> Thanks, man. Who knew the Predator lady had such good beatbox she skills? Really Who knew? Is? The perfect woman. Wait, 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 perfect woman. Yeah. Do you not see her sitting next to Justin Thoreau right there, people? Hello. That's a totally different Hello. movie. Yeah. Stay on target. Come Stay back. on no, target. No, 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 we have cookies right. for you, Justin. <laughs> here's, what I can, here's what I can tell you about this movie. They originally were going to do this as a complete reboot and forget the Predator had ever even taken place and start over again. And then Shane Black came on to direct it. And he said, nope. no, I'll only do it if we continue Weird. to explore it. So this is a sequel. It's not a reboot. Okay. Enjoy it in that way. And, it's uh, a popcorn movie. It's a popcorn movie. So uh, yeah. endorsement, endorsement, endorsement. Yeah, I like yeah, it too. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. see it at your own risk. Don't feel like spending the money getting out, getting a babysitter or whatever it takes for you, then stay home. Netflix has an awesome new movie headed your way. Ooh. Sierra Burgess is a loser. Not really, this movie's awesome. Talk to the stars next. Hey, welcome back to Extra Butter. Thanks to the men and women watching on AFN in 168 Woo! different countries and territories worldwide. Wow. How wild wow. is that to think right now, not only in all these different countries, but right now there are men and women serving the US of A in like submarines watching this show right here. Yeah, hey, wow. thank you so much for your service. I'm sorry in advance for everything we say, especially yeah. this one. Right. Yes, same There's here. no excuse. Thank you so much for putting up with me, but look, you get all them yeah, in exchange sure. for it. And we thank you. Uh, yeah, so and also if you uh, miss anything, want to see anything again, you forgot to DVR the show, be sure and check out our YouTube channel. And of course Woo. on Facebook, it is Extra Butter TV. All yeah. right, let's face it. People are watching on all size screens their movie content yes, these yes. days. Yeah, right. So shout out to Netflix, two awesome movies back to back. Mm -hmm. First of all, you had To All the Boys I've Loved Before, Ooh. and now you've got Sierra Burgess is a Loser. loser? Yes. Yeah. And I like how it's very 80s based theme. There's right? nothing like a good 80s kind of rom-com when yes. a girl loves a boy. It's just a sweet movie. You know? Look, I came through the 80s, and I can tell you this movie hits the mark. Hit exactly. the mark yeah. if, if, if John Hughes were still alive making movies like Pretty in Pink Breakfast or Ferris Club, Bueller's Day Off, Club. Breakfast Club, this would be it. Oh, I'm so ha It's just reminiscent because I grew up watching those movies with my, sis my sister used to watch right? uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off and right? Pretty in Pink all the time. So it's really nice to see these movies kind of come back. I get how they juxtapose that this movie is playing from the 80s, but it also has a relevance that's now. So yes. how do they do that now is like amazing. They really find the balance, honestly. Yeah. There's a lot of parts where you're like, it can take you back like hard, but then they bring out their cell phones and they talk about you know social media and it's such a cool balance. You kind of mix both universes and they do it in such a really cool right. yeah. Amen. way. Amen. Netflix is killing it right killing now. It. And so this movie is sort of a retelling of Cyrano de Bergerac. Google it, get your cliff notes. I did. And so essentially it's this girl that has a crush on a guy. She wants to hang out with the guy and then her enemy almost loves the guy. We've she all be been there, right Kelly? She Am becomes right? friends with the enemy <laughs> and the enemy's not that smart. She's very smart. So she gives the enemies the tools that she needs to get the guy. I just ruined the movie for you. Oh, I just told wow. you everything. Wow. Wow. Why did you just look at me and say the enemy's not that smart and then you looked at her and said, but she's really smart and gives her the tools. I, I, thought, just, she, I thought he was looking at me when he said she's not that smart Stop and then looked at you. So wow. I kind of Felt yeah, I, I just was gonna say okay. Mike, did I offend you at hey, the same time? Geez. Well, I'm very offended. We'll go yeah, yeah. Right. I'll figure out why right. soon. Right. Right. While we clean up this mess, I sat down with the two lovely young ladies who carry this movie. Take a look. Nice to see you too. Awesome work in this. Thank you. I love seeing the two of you. There's something about I walk in the room and I see the two of you sitting side by side. It makes me so happy. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Which might be odd because I'm not even the demo for this movie, but somehow I love this movie so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
you. I appreciate it. So let's talk about the journey. When you got the script, what parts of the script spoke to you? Um, I just love that Sierra is a complex character. And, you know, like teen movies, I think sometimes tend to rely on stereotypes to like get their message across. But yeah. I think every character in this in this movie has a very interesting inner life and, um, you know, turns out to be something different than what you anticipated. Amen. Your character specifically, there's kind of an arc in the movie where we get to know a little bit more about her. Yeah, exactly. So the same thing, that there's a lot more than you'd think that you can't judge a book by its cover. Made me want to go back to high school and reevaluate people that I was making hard judgments on. <laughs> and at the same time, I wanted other people to see this movie that were making hard judgments on right, me. Right, exactly. Shannon and Christine did a great job in this movie. I love them together. And the dude in this movie, man, he is crushing He's it on Netflix. He's killing it. Noah Centineo is also the star. I'm Here's pretty sure you guys have heard about this movie to all the boys I've loved before. Of course. Great book. But this movie, you guys, this movie, you guys, it brought out the little giddy girl in me again. Yeah, he's in everything. I really am. He's in this show I love, too. He's in another show, The Fosters, that I love. That's right. It's a family, dramatic series that me and the family family watch all the time. He's having a good career. I'm going to sandbag my interview. I sat down with him to talk about that and to all the boys I've loved before and this movie. So let's talk more about that and re next week. What do you say? That's a good idea. All right. In the meantime, thanks again for hanging out with us. Follow me at TV Marcus Allen. Follow me at Maria Gloria. Kelly Savannah Deepton. Mike E. Winfield. Woo! See ya! Uh, I'll Two. get the story straight. Either way, we'll explore that and so much more next week. This is a movie, truth. Now I can't. Yeah. Now I got it. I got it. We no, almost got right, right, right. it! Right. I heard it sucked you. <laughs> uh, everybody in, everybody touch the popcorn. Bless the popcorn. Wait, what the heck is in this popcorn? Right. Uh, Sister and brotherhood popcorn. of the traveling popcorn. What? <laughs> what is in this popcorn, you guys? What are you guys doing over here?